Special thanks to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Gear2 if we're here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the LAV-25. The LAV-25, LAV standing for Light Armored Vehicle, is an 8-wheeled amphibious armored reconnaissance vehicle built by General Dynamics Land Systems and used by the United States Marine Corps and the United States Army. During the 1980s, the U.S. Marine Corps began looking for a light armored vehicle to give their divisions greater mobility. They chose the light armored vehicle designed from GM Defense and entered service with the Marines in 1983. The U.S. Army was interested in these vehicles at the time but did not order any. However, they did later adopt similar vehicles with the introduction of the Stryker family. The Army did, however, borrow at least a dozen LEV-25s for use by the 82nd Airborne Division. 373rd armor for a scout platoon during the Gulf War. These uh, LEV-25s were returned to the Marine Corps after the conflict. The USMC ordered 758 vehicles of all variants. LEVs first saw combat during the invasion of Panama in 1989 and continued service in the Gulf War, Iraq War, and War in Afghanistan. The table of organization and equipment for a USMC light armor reconnaissance battalion includes 56 LEV-25s, 16 LEV-8Ts, 16 LEVLs, 8 LEVMs, 4 LEVRs, 4 LEVC2s, and an unknown number of the LEVMEWSS vehicles. The uh, vehicle we stated before, the LEVAT, is also a tutorial available on the ch on the channel. So if you are interested in a um, anti uh, vehicle version of the Striker, that one is available for you as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the um, LEV25. This vehicle is set to be um, replaced. Um, they're hoping to have a new replacement, um, hopefully coming in the future, as the LAV platform is kind of getting a little outdated um, compared to the modern warfare type scenarios. And we're always starting to see some designs emerge of more modern APCs, which I'm sure the United States Marine Corps is going to be adopting here sometime in the near future. The LAV-25, though, a very iconic uh, vehicle of the United States military and modern warfare um, type capabilities. And uh, overall, a pretty kind of staple uh, vehicle for providing some really good uh, support to ground troops in a um, hostile environment. Before we go and move into the tutorial, though, I want, do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to this Patreon supporter, Owen Bross, for making this tutorial possible. If you're interested in supporting the channel more, you already do feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my dis video description, where you can go and put a small amount to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel, and it's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Link again will be in the video descriptions. With that, let's go move into taking a look here at the LAV-25. So the LAV-25 here, starting off with, we have the uh, front here, which does have a wheel mounts on the front. Seems to kind of be a common position for the LAV-25, that, that spare tire there. We have the front armor here, or the front sloping of the hole, nothing too fancy going on here. The hatch for the driver will be located in that area. And we do have the main gun here, which is a 25 millimeter chain gun. Um, so that's mounted right here. And it also does have a coaxial 7.62 millimeter machine gun, and uh, one you still also typically mount it to the roof. So basically, you have two uh, machine guns there, one on the roof and one obviously there coaxialed um, in the turret. You have smoke grenade dispensers there on both sides of the turret there. Obviously, all the radio antennas for communication, all that stuff. And for a bit of detail on the sides here, I went ahead and put some uh, jerry cans here, so some jerry cans on the side of the vehicle. And over here we have like a little rack or a little storage. Uh, area there and then also a air jerry can there and the back's pretty simple you just have basically two uh, doors to get in and out of the vehicle and the brake lights and all that stuff and that right there is pretty much uh, it for the overview for the LEV 25 um, pretty nice uh, vehicle overall and should make an awesome addition to any of your modern warfare conflicts for a nice um, kind of light armored or support type vehicle anyways though let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer Layer number one. All right, guys, so moving into our first layer here, we have layer number one. For layer one to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to start off by placing down two polished black stone stairs back to back, uh, like so, to go ahead and make the first wheel there for the front left. We're going to go ahead and place down a second set directly behind that. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a stonework top slab, come off this stair here, this one here, iron trap doors come off those two slabs, and there's stonework top slab like that, come off those iron trap doors. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished black stone upside down stair on both sides here like this and another one going forward like that and that right there will basically make those um, two uh, or those basically front two uh, axles there with our wheels. 
After that, we're going to go ahead and skip a space back. We're going to go ahead and place down another set of two of polished black stone stairs and another set of two going back from that one. So basically, you have two sets of two there going back. This side here, we're going to go ahead and basically do the same thing. So our two sets of two going back over here as well. Now, in between here, we're going to place down these stone brick top slab here, iron trap door, and then there's stone brick top slab. Same thing here, stone brick top slab, iron trap door, and stone brick top slab. We're going to go then take our birchwood trap doors. We're going to place down a row of three across the back here, and then one coming off the center. Fall by an iron frame on those two um, trap doors, and we're going to go and rotate the iron frame so that they face downwards like so. We also want to go and go up to the front here. We're going to place down a birchwood trap door coming off that iron trap door, and that right there is going to basically do it for that. With that all done, uh, that right there is going to basically conclude. Actually, real quick on the back here, one quick adjustment. We're actually going to go ahead and make this a row, of, two rows of three of birchwood trap doors, then one here in the center, and then an iron frame on the two sides there, and then our tripwire hooks rotated like that facing downwards and like that will what we want there on the back so slight adjustment there uh to the vehicle but yeah it should look something just like that with that all complete that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number one and with that let's move on to layer number two moving into our next layer we have layer number two for layer two to go ahead and get started with here we want to go and begin by placing down two polished black stone stairs back to back on each one of these ups and down stairs this right here will basically make each one of our uh, wheels here for the vehicle and we should have a total of eight of these wheels throughout the build so i'm just going to go ahead and basically apply this to um, all four or all eight wheels and you should get something that looks just like this with that complete we also want to go ahead and go into our creative menu we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves an anvil and we're going to place down an anvil on the iron trap doors here in the center we're going to go then place down a stone brick wall to the sides there of those anvils like so and that will basically create that there we're going to go ahead and fill in a row of three of smooth sandstone across this middle space here and also across this space as well as between these axles right there after that going ahead and focus our attention to the front we're going to place down a row of three of um, blocks across then a row of three of ups and down stairs here and then a birchwood fence gate like that open up toward those slabs like or toward those stairs like so we're going to go ahead and also place down an iron frame on the stair to the right side so the right side over here and coming off that uh, iron frame, we're going to place down, or in the iron frame, we're going to place down a trip bar hook, and we're going to have this rotated facing downwards. We then want to place down two polished black stone stairs back to back, coming off those two smooth sandstone stairs for basically the front spare tire. With that all done, uh, we're going to go and then go to the back of the vehicle here. We're going to go and place down a row of three of smooth sandstone across this space here. And we want to go and then place down a row of five across this space. After that, we're going to go and then place down a sandstone wall to both ends here. And we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of light gray stained glass, or sorry, row of three of uh, yellow stained glass panes across, just like that for the back there. And once we have that all done right there, that's pretty much it for this layer here. Taking a look at it above, this is what it should look like for the top down view. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and then take our uh, basically uh, banners, and we're going to go ahead and make those banner wheels, as you can see right there, which kind of helps spruce up the wheels and give them a little bit more detail. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to make those and grab the materials, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so moving into making these banners are pretty simple to make. We're going to need a loom, two black banners, two yellow dye, and uh, four black dye. For this, we're going to go ahead and place down a loom. We're going to go ahead and go into our loom for black dye and our yellow dye. We're going to take our first banner. We're going to do the line vertically on the left side, like so, and the line vertically on the right side for the second banner. Both these banners will be placed back into a loom for a black dye. We're going to do a line of horizontally across the top and a line horizontally across the bottom to form the C shape. And same thing will be done to this banner. Line across the top of black and line across the bottom to go ahead and create this second C. So you have these two banners here. These banners here will be placed like this, uh, facing toward each other on those two stairs. So the yellow portion again, facing toward each other. And same thing over here for all, all eight wheels. So basically it'll look something just like that. And as you can see, it just kind of adds a lot more to those wheels and makes them look a little more less bland, I guess you can say. Anyways though, that right there is gonna complete layer number two. And with that, let's move on to layer number three. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to begin with, we're gonna place a nice stone brick wall on top of these two here, or on top of these two walls here for each uh, axle, so like that. And we then wanna place down a smooth sandstone block in between those walls. After that, we're gonna go place down a row of three here, and a row of three here. And another row of three across this space like that. We then want to place down another row of three here. And one more going forward. So you have two going toward the front. And then going toward the back, we're going to place down two rows of three like that going down the center like that. Now when it comes to the front, we're going to go and place down a row of three of upside down sandstone stairs. And after we have that row of three of upside down sandstone stairs in place, we're going to place down two polished black stone stairs coming off these two here to the side. On the bottom of those stairs, we're going to go and place down two levers like so. 
and make sure that they are flicked toward the polished blackstone stairs on the bottom there, and that will basically make our front spare tire. To the sides of these sandstone stairs, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. Going back from that, we're going to place down a sandstone upside down stair, and then a sandstone corner stair. Same thing over here, sandstone upside down stair, and a corner stair going back. We're going to go then take our top slabs, go back one, two, three top slabs and then a sandstone ups upside down stair like that. Alrighty, so after that stair is placed, we're gonna go and then take our sandstone top slabs. We're gonna go back three more and then a upside down sandstone stair right here. This side over here, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna place down after that corner stair, one, two, three top slabs, a upside down stair, then one, two, three top slabs, and then a upside down stair like so with a birchwood sign on the side of that stair. Same thing over here. We're gonna go and then place down a smooth sandstone block that goes back followed by an additional one, so you have two that go back like so. And we then want to place down two birchwood buttons, going back from those blocks like that. And then a tripwire hook coming off those two blocks like so. In the middle here, we're going to place down a endstone brick wall on both sides, and then a sandstone wall there in the center. And once you have that all complete, that right there will wrap up what we have there for layer three. And with that, let's move on to layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to begin with, we're going to place down a daylight detector on top of this sandstone stair here, and then a trip or hook to both sides, or sorry, a trap door to both sides of birch wood. We then want to place down a sandstone slab here in the center. Then after that, we're going to then place down a birch wood slab, and then another sandstone slab like that to the center. We're going to go grab ourselves some birch wood fence gates, place down a fence gate here on top of the stair, open it toward the front, same thing over here. Then an item frame coming off those fence gates, and then a snowball in the item frames like so. With that complete, we're going to build off of this fence gate here to the side. Same thing over here, like so. We want to go then grab a lever. We're going to place down a lever on the side of these sandstone blocks. And this is going to be for Java. So we're going to do it on one side here, but the same will be applied to the other side. So this is what you want for Java. At this point, we're going to then type in slash give space at P Minecraft. Colon debug underscore stick and this right here is the command you want by pressing enter it will give you this glowing stick we can go ahead and then take this time to go ahead and left click the stick until we get the pop-up that's selected facing and it should say a direction in parentheses by right clicking this lever it will rotate it around until you connect up to that fence gate it may be a little bit different you may have to do a few more clicks make sure that you do crouch and uh right click when you do do that so that you aren't just activating the lever because it will do that so by shift right clicking it will rotate it and you may need to rotate it a couple more different times to get it to line up perfectly as your vehicle could be rotated or oriented different from mine and how it is on my world um, so that's right there what you can do on java and then on top of this just so we don't have to worry about it later we'll place down a skeleton skull on top of that lever now an alternative to this for those on bedrock or pocket edition we can place down a birch with fence gate here to the side open it toward this fence gate and then on top of that fence gate we can place down a skeleton skull like so that's an option for uh you uh, uh bedrock or pocket edition players and um a alternative for it but obviously the lever there is going to be the best um case scenario and i would strongly recommend it if i was a um java player Anyways, after we get to this point, we're going to then take pistons. We're going to place down a row of three here. Now, I recommend the pistons for a Java player. If you are on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, end stone, uh, or the end portal frames will work uh, for this situation as well. So, you can use the end portal frames as well. And then, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone slab to both sides there. After that, we're going to go and then place down a row of three of polished blackstone, or sorry, two polished blackstone blocks like so. And then, a smooth sandstone block over here to the other side. At this point in time, taking our debug stick, we'll right click our pistons, and you can see here it gets rid of that top portion. It really helps with the front sloping there of our vehicle. So, just a nice little kind of um, sloping technique there. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down a uh, birchwood, or a, yeah, stripped birchwood log right here. And then to the sides of this, we're going to place down uh, two polished blackstone blocks like this. And we then want to go and place down one and two polished blackstone logs on their side, on the right side here and a wither skeleton skull that'll be coming off the right side one. After that, over here to the air side, we're gonna place down a row two of yellow stained glass panes. Now over here on the right side, we're gonna place down one, two, three yellow stained glass panes, and then we're gonna go two polished black stone blocks back, and then one and two, two rows of two of smooth sandstone. Over here on the other side, we're gonna place down a row three of smooth sandstone. However, after that row of three, we're gonna go to the sides here, and we wanna place down two sandstone walls, and then one, two, three iron bars. On the sides here, the iron bars, we're going to place down birchwood trap doors. Then, uh, taking our smooth sandstone, we're just going to place down one and two more rows of three going back down the center. 
And then to the right side here, we're going to place down one, two, and three green shulker boxes like so. On the sides of these shulker boxes, we're going to place down jungle buttons for basically tie down straps to secure the jerry cans to the side of the vehicle. Then after we have that done, uh, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, smooth sandstone across that section there, and then a yellow stained glass pane in this section here. We then want to place down a um, green shulker box over here on the left side, so again in our jerry can, and we'll place down a jungle button here on the side, and again our smooth sandstone will go across with a row of three. We're going to go then place down a yellow stained glass pane right here. And then on the very back, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block in the center. Then a stripped birchwood log to both sides like so. Coming off those stripped birchwood logs, we're going to go and grab ourselves item frames and black beds. We're going to place down item frames, coming off those blocks, and then black beds in those item frames. Rotate so the pillows are facing toward the middle there. And we then want to go and grab our sub birchwood signs. And being on Java, we can place down birchwood signs on the side of that block as well so that they cover up the item frame a little bit better. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would recommend just placing down the item frames and disregarding the signs as you will not be able to place them. We're going to go ahead and place down a sandstone wall, come off both sides here of those strip birchwood blocks, item frames, and then in those item frames, we're going to place down a red apple for the back tail lights here for the vehicle. And once we have that all done there, that's pretty much it. Uh, for the most part, a few quality of life changes we can make for us Java players is we can actually extend the direction of the glass panes. So we can actually go ahead and extend uh, the direction here of the glass panes by going ahead and changing the direction. So this may take some messing around with to figure out what direction your panes need to go in, but we can actually connect them up to the uh, shulker boxes like so. And that's pretty much what we can do for those three glass panes. And it just kind of helps with the overall flow of the vehicle and shaping wise and all that stuff. So anyways though, that right there is gonna conclude what we have there for layer number um, four. And with that, we'll move on to layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to go ahead and get started with, you're gonna place down one and two rails on this block here. And we're gonna go then place down um, another set of two right alongside it. So, or one right here. So like this, hopefully. Don't know why it's acting so funky on me. Um, considering I got it to work just fine over there. Um, but I guess either way will work. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, we can also go ahead and kind of change this up if we're really having problems. Uh, we can grab item frames and we can actually use those here in this situation. So um, I'm not sure why those, um, why these worked for me um, when I was building this thing originally, but uh, we can place down item frames here and iron bars instead there um, for us to make that work there. Then we're going to place down a flower pot here and also a flower pot on that yellow stained glass pane. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves some birchwood buttons. We're going to place down two on top of those blocks right there. And then we're going to then place down a another set of two or two birchwood up sound stairs in this section right there. Now coming off these stairs to the sides, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull to both sides. And then going forward from the stair on the left side, we're going to place down two dark oak wood fence gates and then two end rods and then a wither skeleton skull there on the end now this will cause your pistons to reactivate so you will have to go ahead and just grab yourself a debug stick here again and use the same uh, technique there for the front there for us java players we're gonna go then place down a chain coming off this right stair and then we're gonna place down a birchwood fence gate coming off those two skeleton skulls and then on top of the skeleton skulls or actually rather on top of the fence gates we're gonna place down a wither skeleton skull Going ahead and going back from this, we're going to take our smooth sandstone, we're going to place down two rows of two, going across, and then we're going to go and then place down two sandstone walls to the sides here, so one, two, and one, two. Then on the very back, we're going to go and place down a row of two of sandstone up down stairs, and then a row of birchwood top slabs across. Also on the sides here of these stairs, we're going to place down birchwood fence gates opened up toward those stairs like so. We're also going to go and grab zombie heads, and on top of the shulker boxes, we're going to place down one, two, and three. Zombie heads like so, and same thing can be done over here on the left side. We're going to then place down an end rod. For the end rod, though, we want to place down a block that's going to be a space above that wall. And we're going to then place down an end rod coming off the bottom of that block, and then we can delete that block like that. So we have the base here of the end rod facing upwards like so. We're going to then place down a birchwood trapdoor on top of this block here, and then a birchwood button on top of those two blocks like so. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up my tutorial. Not my tutorial, but that's going to wrap up layer number five for the tutorial. With that, we're going to go and move into our final layers, which will be layers six through nine. All right, guys, moving into our final layers, we have layers six through nine. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go and start off by going ahead and grabbing ourselves some 
um, daylight detectors. We're gonna place down a row of two on top of those two blocks right there. At this point in time, we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves some item frames. We're gonna place down one and two item frames across this section here, and we're gonna go ahead and then place down a um, black uh, bed that's gonna be in the item frames or rotate so the pillows are facing toward the center like so. Now on the what will be the left side of the vehicle, so this side over here, we're gonna place down a birchwood sign for us on Java. And also for us on Java, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate in this section right here, and we're going to have that opened up toward the back there. So uh, those the fence gate and that sign will not be able to place, be placed if you are on um, Bedrock or Pocket Edition. I would recommend placing the fence gate over the item frame just because we do have that gun that's mounted up on top there, and you will have just a floating gun that might look a little weird if you do not place the fence gate. So it's probably best in this case to place the fence gate, though you will lose out on that detail. Um, that makes it a little more accurate. So just a heads up on that one. Um, you'll have to make some uh, adjustments there to make that work. We're gonna go then place down a uh, flower pot on these two balls here. And then we wanna go then grab ourselves birchwood slabs and place down a row of two. We're gonna go then also place down a skeleton skull on top of those two walls there. Then on the back here, we're gonna place down a birchwood stair like so, and then a birchwood slab, or sorry, a uh, smooth sandstone stair and a smooth sandstone slab. And then going up from the fence gate here, we're going to place down a fence post. And that'll be on both sides there. And we're also going to go ahead and then grab ourselves iron bars. And we're going to go up three iron bars from those fence posts. So one, two, and three on both sides. We then also want to go ahead and place down a fence post. That's going to be on top of this skeleton skull up here in the front left. And same thing, we're going to go ahead and go up three iron bars. We're also going to place down a fence post on top of this stair here. And on top of that fence post, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. Going to the back, we're going to place down two birchwood trapdoors. And we're going to go ahead and then wrap our birchwood trapdoors around the trapdoors like that. So you have your birchwood signs wrapped around. And that basically creates that little back section there um, for extra gear and stuff like that to be mounted. With that all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and then take our, or make our machine gun up here, which will be a polished blackstone slab on top of this um, daylight detector. We're going to go then place down a end rod. Uh, coming off of it going forward and then a chain After that on the back here, we're gonna place down a wither skeleton skull like so and then to the left side We'll place down a zombie head here for the um, kind of uh, I guess the container hole in the belts um, For the machine gun or the bullets, whatever. We're gonna go then place down a item frame here and we're gonna go then place down a Black bed in the item frame like this with the black bed rotated to the back and we then want to place down a dark oak sign for us on Java on the side of that slab as well to kind of help bring it all together. With that all complete, that's going to make that machine get up on top there. And with that, that will complete my tutorial here for the LAV25 um, Armored Work Constant vehicle. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this vehicle and are able to put it to good use. If you do abuse these builds, I do ask that you guys uh, give me proper credit for it. This being the link from the side of the build to make my channel or this video if this does appear in social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use whatever project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Again, a big short thanks to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that, though, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett24, and I'll see you guys next time.